Aloha, welcome to Adventures in Small Business. My name is Victoria, and this is a collaboration between Small Business Administration and its partners, where we talk about small businesses in Hawaii. Today we have a guest from the VBOC of the Pacific, Dennis Kwok. Hey. Hi, Dennis. Hey, nice to be here. Thank you for being here. Um, so I'm looking forward to talk more about uh, how to start a business in Hawaii. Sure. But before we jump into that, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I'm the director of the Veterans Business Outreach Center. Uh, this program is an SBA program, and we've been here uh, for about three years now. Um, prior, uh, prior to me taking the job as a director, I was actually a business advisor uh, with the Small Business Development Center here in Hawaii for about seven years. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, I've been in economic development uh, for about 10 years, and uh, I just really love and uh, enjoy uh, working with small businesses and entrepreneurs and helping them uh, start and grow their businesses. Nice, me yeah. too, yeah. I enjoy that part. <laughs> for sure, yeah. <laughs> so uh, can you tell us more about VBOC of the Pacific? What, what does it do? Oh, well, yeah, we're a program, like I said, uh, uh, we get a grant from the Small Business Administration. Um, we're, in, uh, we're housed under the University of Hawaii at Hilo. And uh, although, uh, you know, that's our sponsor, I mean, that's our host, um, my office is actually uh, at the Manoa Innovation Center above the University of Hawaii at um, Manoa. And um, we work primarily with uh, military installations, providing uh, workshops and trainings called the Boots to Business Program. Mm -hmm. um, where we showcase, uh, we, we uh, do two-day workshops in military installations across the islands. Um, we also cover Guam and American Samoa. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're not doing workshops, uh, we do one-on-one uh, -on -one business consultations for uh, veterans and uh, military families. Nice. So you have a lot of experience in small well, business about consulting. Yeah. Uh, so you're the best person to talk about how to start a business in Hawaii. I, oh, think. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so how do I start a business in Hawaii? Oh, wow. Well, that's a kind of a, that's a simple question, but a kind of a long answer. But uh, first, you have to determine what kind of, uh, how you want to start that business. Most people think uh, starting a business is about creating a business. But there's av other avenues that you can take. Um, one of them is uh, obviously uh, purchasing a business. And the other, which is kind of popular in Hawaii, is uh, taking over a business from your family member or from an employer. Mm -hmm. um, uh, creating a business, a new business, is uh, everyone's idea of starting a business. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you choose an avenue, um, you have to do due diligence and make sure that uh, your you know, idea or your business model makes sense. And, uh, mm -hmm. That's how you start a business. So that's how you get it down on paper. You've got to first determine the avenue you want to take. Mm -hmm. What yeah. about franchising? Oh, franchising is definitely one of them, and I forgot to mention it's that. Yeah, one. it's no. definitely another one. Um, it's uh, you know, franchising has a lot of benefits, um, and one of the benefits is that there's already a built-in process, and people like that, um, so they can actually work on the craft of the business, and the process is already in place. There's huge market potential because uh, you have like a big corporate backer for marketing, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it's a proven business model. Mm -hmm. And one of the risks going back to creating a new business is that uh, when you create a new business, uh, the big, biggest uh, risk is that it's not a proven business model. Mm -hmm. So um, with you know, risk, there comes great reward, but on the flip side, uh, the risk is uh, quite big. Mm -hmm. The downsides of franchising is that you have to pay royalties, you have to pay franchise fee, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. So you have um, to have some money to you, start it. Of course, yeah. I mean... Uh, there's a lot of uh, yeah downsides of starting a franchise too, but um, great uh, if you have a good franchise or you have a good uh, franchise model, uh, it definitely helps you start the business, especially if you're new to creating your um, own business. Mm -hmm. But you're right, uh, franchise fees can be uh, pretty big, and as well as the royalties. So mm -hmm. uh, depending on uh, you know what your profit margins are, giving royalties, even though they seem little, whether it's two three percent that really dips into your profit margins uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the year, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of different ways to start a business, and yes. one is not better than the other, I right? It really so. depends on your goals. Of course, yeah. of course. And, uh, you know, buying a business, in which, uh, you know, we talked about just a minute ago, it's a, it's a good way to actually um, start a business as well. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you can buy a business and improve on the existing business model, um, that's a great way to actually, uh, you know, grow that business. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, just be aware when you buy a business, you have to do due diligence. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to make sure that the business is in good standing because ultimately you're going to inherit the good and the bad of that business. Uh, the bad being, you know, 
uh, whether they have you know late payments, they're not in you know um, good standing with the state, or you know um, uh, you know they have problems with their uh, vendors. Uh, the good being that you know they already have an existing client base, and hopefully you can build on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I would always say that when you're buying a business, uh, you know you look at their tax returns for three years. Um, and the best way to get that is um, having the owners issue what's called a 4506T form, which is an IRS form uh, that kind of uh, gives the uh, profit and loss statements of that business to the uh, potential buyer. And very important to have good advisors, yeah? Before oh, yeah, making I, I think decisions. so, yeah. And it, it's, uh, you know, um, a lot of people, when they start a new business, they kind of want to remain kind of uh, you know, under the radar. They don't want other people to steal their idea. But I always think that's uh, kind of a paranoia, and I don't think that's a good way to actually, um, you know, go into researching about a business, mm -hmm. you know, because having feedback is, a, you know, really good validation for your idea. Mm -hmm. so. I always say, if your business is great, Sooner or later, somebody will copy you. So you just have to accept that. If your business idea is not great, you're safe. Yeah, yeah? that's true. That's so true. no need to worry yeah, about Yeah, no that. need to worry. I mean, there's <laughs> always going to be people trying to emulate you, but you should take that in you know, good stride mm -hmm. and try to improve on what we already built. Mm -hmm. Great. So the most popular one is actually the new business creation, right? Yeah. Um, so Let's say I have an idea. How do I know I got it right? How do I know my business idea has potential? Um, the first thing you need to do, like we were talking about, is uh, you need to do some vetting to make sure that the idea resonates with your potential customers. Mm -hmm. um, there's really nothing better than getting validation from your potential customers and making sure, I mean, um, for them saying, hey, yeah, it's a great product, it's a great idea. And when I say uh, potential customers, I'm not talking about your auntie and your uncles people that might really purchase uh, your product or service. Um, I also think that your idea has to relate to some kind of friction or bottleneck. And when I say that, I mean like um, your idea has to have some kind of value proposition where it helps, uh, it helps, um, you know, basically, or improves somebody's life. Why? Yeah. There's got to be something that it makes a situation better for your potential customer. Is either you solving a problem or you providing a solution to someone's need. Of course, yeah. yeah. And if you look at all the great businesses that's been built in the past 10 years, it's always about addressing issues where there's bottleneck or where there's friction. Mm -hmm. you know? And you talk about you know, uh, good companies uh, or like industry changing, mm -hmm. companies like Uber, you know, they uh, saw kind of a friction or bottleneck in transportation, mm -hmm. logistics, and they kind of changed that around in technology. You know? um, but I always think that if you have some kind of value proposition where it matters to your potential customer, um, I think that is a great business idea. Mm -hmm. so. There are so many businesses out there already. Yeah. How to be unique and different? That's that is a good question. really hard. Uh, yeah, it's definitely hard. And uh, being unique is, uh, it can come in all different kinds of you know, factors. I mean, it could be unique in product and service. But it could be also unique in location. It could be unique in um, you know, price points, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might have the exact same product as somebody else, but you know, you're at a better price point. You know, you're going to have that edge. And that's going to be your niche. You know? mm -hmm. um, so I mean, I don't think one is greater than the other, but mm -hmm. you definitely have to be different. If you just are among the crowd, uh, you won't stand out. And in this uh, competitive environment, you definitely need to stand out. So you mentioned market research and that you have to talk to your customers yeah. to validate your idea. Do you have any ideas? How, how can I do market research for my business idea? Yeah, I mean, when you're talking about market research, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, understanding your customer base. Um, I always found the census has a lot of great data, uh, especially when you're kind of uh, honing in on, you know, um, what the population size is, the demographics and geographics of your potential customers. Um, and when you're talking about industry data, I always liked uh, IBIS World. Uh, I don't know what IBIS stands for. I know it's an acronym for something. It's IBIS, but mm -hmm. uh, they put out very comprehensive industry reports where you can really do some research on uh, the industry and whether that industry has legs, whether it's on an upward tick or a downward tick. Mm -hmm. um, and I would always advise clients that it's hard to be a superstar in a downward spiraling industry, you know? I mean, certain industries just have, you know, a downward path. And no matter how good of a business person you are, um, if you're fighting against that kind of momentum of a downward 
uh, industry, it's very hard to kind of come back and uh, thrive in that industry. Just like retail business. Well, yeah, you, like, you know, I mean, we hear every day that retail is dying and, you know, a lot of times uh, people point their fingers at Amazon. I mean, that's retail too, but uh, yeah, traditional brick and mortar retail, mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, it's seen better days. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, retail will, uh, it'll always be there, but I don't think it'll thrive like it did, you know, 20, 30 years ago. It will definitely change. It will definitely change. That's and why I have to do market research. That's why you have to do market <laughs> research, yeah, for sure, yeah. And uh, we should mention that uh, to get IBIS World Report, you can actually contact VBOC. Yeah. Uh, because we have access to market research. That's it. Yeah, uh, so if you're a veteran or a you know, military spouse and you're thinking about starting a business, and let's say you want to do like um, trucking or let's say food and beverage, it's a great way to actually just reach out to us and uh, say, hey, you know, I want to know more about this industry. Does it have legs? We can provide you a pretty comprehensive report, yeah, for free. Yeah, I like free. Yeah, I, I think everybody <laughs> likes free. <laughs> so that's industry research, and then market research is talking to customers, doing surveys. Uh, do you suggest uh, some specific ways of talking to customers? Yeah, I mean, surveys uh, seems to work. Um, and uh, you know, we were talking about that. You know, getting in uh, touch with your potential customers. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to actually just just get some honest feedback. Mm -hmm. And we call that like primary market research. Is when you actually are on the floor talking to potential customers, whether that be you know um, on the street or you know getting a survey done. Um, what about focus group? Focus group is another great example. Sure. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. There's definitely a lot of ways uh, you can do. Um, you know, online marketing or online surveys. But I always thought like that, you know, personal face to face with a potential customer has the uh, has the most potential. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and the most honest feedback. Mm -hmm. um, but what we see actually in real life, a lot of small business owners skip that step, even though we think it's very important. Right? Yeah, and you know, why that do you think that is? I don't know. I think it's just uh, people are a little bit hesitant to share their ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really about like, oh, I don't want my idea to be stolen. You know, I want my idea to be protected. Um, but once you start selling and once you start manufacturing or, you know, you, you know, market, start marketing your business. And if it's a great business, people are like we said, they're going to try to emulate you. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, you can take that, uh, you know, as a pride point, you know, rather than, you know, trying to push that back. Because uh, any great idea is going to be uh, copied in some form or fashion. Yeah? yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we talked about validating your idea, market research. What about economics of a business? What are the key things to consider in terms of economics? Oh, um, well, you know, I think everybody goes into business for some kind of financial gain. Um, you know, if you're not doing that, then you probably shouldn't go into business. Uh, but you should be aware of, uh, like, an economic model that makes sense for your business. Um, there's some key levers that you should really pay attention to. Um, and we teach this in Boost to Business, but uh, one of the key levers is uh, revenue streams, you know, or you know, sources of revenue. Um, that is probably the biggest, just because uh, you might have uh, one product or one you know, service, but you ultimately have to build on that. It's very hard to kind of thrive in this business if you just have one product, one service. Um, we're, we were currently working with a food and beverage, a restaurant, Recently, and uh, you know, um, their primary source was actually you know selling food, uh, but you know they found a market where you know a lot of customers were coming in, and these customers, their market base were, uh, you know, um, tourists from overseas, and they wanted some kind of like a gift that they could take away with them. So they started selling little trinkets, keychains, T-shirts, and you know this is a great uh, example of how they added a revenue source, and now that accounts for. I believe like 12 or 13 percent of their total annual sales, which is you know something that they didn't dis uh, they didn't really uh, recognize an opportunity. But you know, adding these kind of little revenue streams uh, can really bolster a company's financials. Um, the second lever, I, I believe, is obviously you can't take talk one without the other, but it's really margins and uh, margins and uh, volume. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you got to have some kind of uh, margins from each sale. Now, if you're making just a one dollar out of you know ten thousand you know uh, ten thousand units, you know it's not as much as obviously you know making a little bit more. So you got to be kind of cognizant about you know your margins and your volumes in a given time frame. That totally makes sense. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you. So yeah. we're going to take a short break and we will be back in one minute. Hey, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us and I uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Melly James, host of Let's Mana Up. Tuesdays, every other Tuesday, from 11 to 11.30. This show is meant to dive into stories of local product entrepreneurs and how they're growing their companies from right here in Hawaii. I'm so thrilled to have our show kicked off, and so please join us on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock as we talk to local entrepreneurs and hear their stories. Aloha, welcome back to Adventures in Small Business. My name is Victoria and today I'm talking to Dennis Kwok from the VBOC of the Pacific and we are talking about how to start a business in Hawaii. Yes. Welcome and back. Thanks. Well, thanks. thanks. <laughs> so we talked about market research and we talked about business model and economics. Um, what about legal entities? I feel like it's a big question for a lot of small business owners uh, yeah, starting out. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's uh, one of those big questions that we always get asked. Um, you know, what kind of legal entity should I have? Well, you know, them knowing that they have to have a legal entity is a good starting point. Um, but there's a lot to choose from. Uh, there's sole proprietorships. Uh, there's different kinds of partnerships, uh, general partnerships, limited partnerships, limited liability partnerships. Um, but it seems like the most popular one for small businesses is what's called a limited liability company. Um, the limited liability company is recognized by the state, uh, but the IRS doesn't recognize it, so you'll have to kind of choose a different entity for filing with the IRS, but every state has a limited liability company uh, option. So, uh, one of the great things about limited liability uh, companies um, is that it gets funneled into your, it's a straight uh, run through, so basically it gets funneled into your personal taxes when you file, uh, but it's actually considered two separate entities in that state. So it's kind of a, you know, uh, separating those entities, your personal and your business, and which kind of uh, provides a lot of protection for that individual that is the owner of that limited liability company. But LLCs or limited liability companies seems to be the most popular. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just want to say that, uh, you know, because we're not attorneys, we don't really give uh, legal advice. Mm -hmm. uh, but from what I've seen, uh, limited liability companies seem to be, yeah. Uh, the most popular. Yeah. What about corporations? Yeah, corp uh, of course, corporations is a big one, uh, you know, C-Corps, um, but, uh, you know, we don't, because we primarily deal with small businesses, and small businesses, you know, it's a, it's a big, it's a big portion of Hawaii's, small bus I mean, Hawaii's businesses, mm -hmm. um, but it also is, you can be a small business and have, you know, 100 employees or 90 employees, mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of small businesses that are C-Corporations, but I'm talking really more about starting out, when you're starting out, mm -hmm. I think an LLC is probably the better way to go, and then C corporations, um, you know, one of the, you know, one of the good things is you are offered more protection as a C corporation, and mm -hmm. you can, it's much easier to raise money or raise equity in a C corp. Uh, but the flip side of that, uh, of raising money is that, um, you know, you're going to have what's called double taxation. Uh, you're going to get taxed on the corporate level, and you're going to get taxed on the individual level. So a lot of people are kind of swayed away from that because of the double taxation. Um, and it's much easier to go from an LLC to a C corporation rather than going from a C corporation down to an LLC. So just start with LLC and then as you grow, maybe switch to a C corporation. Yeah, I would always say, uh, yeah, uh, uh, LLC is the best way to start just because you want to make sure that, you know, you're giving the freedom to kind of move about your monies. Mm -hmm. um, and if after the year or two, you feel like your company has legs and it's got financial legs and it's doing well, then you can kind of migrate toward filing as an S corporation, an mm -hmm. LLC with the state, but an S corp. An S corporation is basically putting yourself on, as an employee of that said business. Um, and that kind of, uh, you know, uh, mitigates some of the kind of tax obligations that you might have for, uh, you know, for your business, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once again, this is not a legal advice. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. This is just the talking seen, from experience. Yeah, what, and what yes. we've seen exactly yeah, from yeah. all the clients that we've worked with. Yes. Yeah. Um, and would you say uh, I need to hire a lawyer to register a business or no? 
Um, you know, you could hire an attorney, and I always think it's good to speak to an attorney. Um, I don't think it's a necessity. Um, it can, if you can, in Hawaii, um, through ehawaii.gov, it's a kind of a fairly easy process to mm -hmm. register a business. Uh, so I would say that, you know, you can try a gander, trying to do it yourself. If you kind of run into troubles, you don't understand what kind of questions they're asking, maybe um, seek assistance from mm -hmm. a resource partner or an attorney, mm -hmm. and uh, they can hopefully provide you uh, some good advice. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I really like about Hawaii. I think it's pretty cheap to start a business, especially LLC, and pretty easy. It's all online, so yeah. just Department of Commerce and then IRS. And um, if anyone needs help, we have SBA, SBDC, VBOC. Women's Business Center, so a lot of resources to support uh, small business owners. So I totally agree with you. Yeah, uh, it's an it's good to have a lawyer, mm -hmm. but uh, not a necessity in terms of registering a business. But yeah. then some other legal issues like contract and maybe patents or trademarks. Oh, uh, yeah. that might uh, need some uh, assistance from a legal attorney. Yeah, I mean, if contracts definitely you want to make sure you're uh, you're protected. As well as your business, um, and as well uh, for like intellectual property, like patents and uh, mm -hmm. the things like trademarks, uh, you should definitely seek advisement from a you know, patent attorney or mm -hmm. from an IP attorney. Mm -hmm. And that could be expensive, but again, we have Business Law Corp. Oh yeah, yeah, here, we do. Yeah? yeah, so you know, we partner up. Uh, not uh, we, but the economic these uh, Women's Business Center and the Small Business Development Center, and uh, as well as us, uh, we partner up with uh, Business Law Corp. And uh, the Business Law Court has been an invaluable resource where they kind of offer legal advice for free. Um, and uh, it happens like every week, right? Yes, okay. I believe so. Or okay. every other week. Every other week, <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, great, so we talked about legal entities. Now another important topic is how do I finance my business? So most small business owners, they don't have enough money to finance this startup. So uh, where do I go? What do I do? Oh, well, uh, I think it really depends on the type of business that you want to start and the owner, the type of person you are in terms of, you know, what kind of you know, financial backing you have. Um, you know, each different, um, each is, and it's hard to kind of say this is the best path to go forward. But uh, we've seen people, the most successful ones are uh, that utilize a lot of different sources of financing options. Uh, the first and primary is uh, uh, owner savings. Uh, that seems to be the biggest. And it really should be you know, uh, the biggest, just because it's hard to start a business and um, leverage a, uh, a new business and try to get financing for that. Um, but uh, owner's financing is the biggest. People do use credit cards, and I have kind of a love-hate with credit cards. It's good when you start out, but if you, can, if you know you can pay that back before the, you know, they increase your um, APR, then definitely you can use credit cards. Um, and of, of course, uh, small business loans is a, definitely an option. Um, mm -hmm. Banks are weary about giving small business loans to startups, uh, but it definitely does, does happen, and uh, you know people can utilize uh, you know lending institutions and um, of course uh, SBA loan program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of options, but the best would be just to save money. Uh, yeah, I would use some. Start I mean, with your own. And, and the reason I say that is because uh, you know uh, paying back a loan when you're starting out uh, can be cumbersome for a small mm -hmm. business. Uh, so it's good to have a combination of everything, you know, your own mm -hmm. personal savings, some loan, maybe not the bulk of it, but some loans uh, can come in form, uh, form of a term loan or a line of credit, and maybe some equity injection from, you know, some friends and families, mm -hmm. and using some credit card uh, to, you know, finance your business. Uh, but a, a, kind of a, a mix of uh, financing is probably the most uh, risk averse. Mm -hmm. So here again depends on your goals, I guess. Uh, if you're okay with losing some of the control, you can go with investors route because sometimes they want a part of your company. A lot of times they want a part of your company. Yeah. The business loan, you really have full control of your business, but you have to start paying back the loan right away. Yeah. So there are pros and cons and depends on everything. Yeah, it depends on the business owner's goals and it also depends on, you know, uh, you know, what kind of industry you're in, you know, certain industries are more susceptible to raising equity or raising, you know, investors' monies, um, especially if you're in, like, biotech or technology. But some industries, like food and beverage, usually, you know, uh, owners, uh, you know, put in a lot of money, other money, and they get some financing from the banks. Mm -hmm. What about crowdfunding? Yeah, crowdfunding's a, an idea. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but you're not going to get the bulk of the money from crowdfunding. And it's, you know, crowdfunding is really about exposure uh, as well as raising a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think uh, the facet of marketing and exposure has a greater impact than actually raising money. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are some ridiculous campaigns that went out on crowdfunding sites uh, that's done tremendously well. But mm -hmm. I think those are kind of one-offs, mm -hmm. not like the standard bearer. Mm -hmm. you know? There are a lot of maybe IT um, or art type of companies that succeed on Kickstarter. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so crowdfunding can, we can consider, but for probably very small businesses, not going to bring the bulk. Yeah. yeah, and it like, you know, crowdfunding casts a wider net, you know, you can, it's out on the web, so, you know, you have a wider net, um, you know, they're investing maybe $50, mm -hmm. $75 at a time, but it's not really substantial to, I guess, uh, you know, getting a loan, and you're kind of uh, on the behest of these people that you don't know, and you don't know, yeah. you know, you don't know where that money's coming from, too, so, you know, a lot of people are kind of have a love-hate relationship with crowdfunding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that could be also a good market research opportunity to see how people are reacting to your idea. Whether definitely. they like it or I not. I definitely agree with that. Like we were talking about, it's a marketing effort and to see kind of, you know, validation points for your business idea. Okay. Yeah. Um, so business planning and business plan. How do I start writing a business plan? What are the must-have sections for a lot of people? This is kind of a, a difficult topic yeah. and intimidating. But do you have any advice in terms of business plan um, starting on it? Well, I think a lot of the things that you go through your mind when you're starting a business has to be put down. Because, you know, your mind works in a million miles an hour. So the best way to do it is actually uh, putting it down on paper. And a business plan is kind of that form. Um, there is no real right format. Um, there's a lot of great software out there like LivePlan. Uh, but, um, you know, it's the must-haves of a business plan is uh, the executive summary. Um, you know, you got to have financials, you got to have marketing, you got to have all those uh, things basically kind of, and uh, I know you're giving me the signal that I got to stop, but there's that definitely a lot of uh, things. But, you know, you should, you should check out, people can check out the, the economic development organization like the SBDC and the uh, VBOX and the Women's Business Center or the Mink Center for Business and Leadership to uh, kind of put their business plan together and it will definitely help. And what I personally really like is a business model canvas. Yeah. So I think that's a good first step because it's all in one page. Um, so start with that and then move on to business plan. There are templates on SBA website. And then again, uh, we can help you yeah. through the process. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, I know you have a, an announcement. Yeah, yeah? I do. Uh, well, uh, I want to say that... Uh, you know, uh, National Veteran Small Business Week is coming up on November 4th through the 8th. It's kind of a great week where we celebrate veteran uh, entrepreneurship and small business owners. And uh, I would love for everybody to get involved. And uh, we're going to do our third annual um, small business, uh, Veteran Small Business Awards here in Hawaii. And uh, it's going to be on November 8th. Uh, the location is yet to be determined. But uh, when we decide that, uh, please check us out on our website and, uh, you know, hit us up. And I hope everybody could nominate some uh, veteran owners uh, as well as uh, new veteran businesses and veteran advocates uh, for the awards. Looking forward. This should be a fun event. It definitely is. Every year is, we have a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so much, Dennis, for sharing your wisdom. Uh, thank you for and, having me. And uh, thank you for watching. Please follow us on social media. Look for VBOC of the Pacific on Facebook and Twitter. And follow uh, our YouTube channel, Hawaii Small Business. Um, I'll see you next Thursday at 11 o'clock at Adventures in Small Business. Uh, stay tuned and thank you for watching. Aloha.